Let me begin at the end. We live in a world where hunger is the number one killer. 80% of the world lives on less than $10 a day. And by the time I finish this TED talk, about 300 more children will die of preventable diseases. I'm here today to talk to you about charity and social entrepreneurship and how if each and every one of us got more involved, how we could make a difference to the world. For this talk, I will use visual landmarks, photographs that I took as I traveled the world. I hope to better understand it so that I could better serve it. And since TED is a place where you spread ideas, hopefully worth spreading, I wanted to present my notion, which is a simple one. If each person who is able were to save just one life, then the world is already saved. In essence, how each and every one of us can make the world a better place, more humane, for the faceless, the silenced, the homeless, the forgotten, the unpeople. Poverty is a, fail, is, a fa is a veil that obscures the face of greatness. But there is hope, it's simple maths. If there are three billion people in poverty, that means there are four billion outside of it. The numbers tell me that this notion is achievable. It all begins with each and every one of us. My story is simple. I left my career six years ago. In my last year in the real estate market, I sold about half a billion dollars worth of property. And I was sitting, I was sitting at home. And there was something wrong. I wasn't feeling right. And I realized that I was uncomfortable in my comfort unable to enjoy my luxuries. Others are denied food, water, shelter, and education, their dignity. And there I was, living my life with a complete sense of indifference. And with camera as my pen and film my notebook, I set out on this global humanitarian journey, financing, supporting, and initiating 54 different projects, both humanitarian and environmental, in 44 countries. Now, although this is a very deep and close subject to my heart, I don't want to show you just the ugly. I want you to see the good, the beauty, the colors, the cultures, and hopefully inspire you to go out there and take on the world, for it's a beautiful place and it's much safer than you think it is. I set out with 45 kilos, both front and backpack. All my gear, boots, clothes, shoes, underwater camera, video camera, camera, laptop, the works. It was heavy, but you climatize. I never knew where I was going to sleep, who I was going to help, or what I was going to do. All I knew is that something good was going to happen. I traveled on different mediums. Chicken buses, that's me very uncomfortable in the bottom. Uh, Tuk-tuks, not that one, but I saw that one. Uh, pickup trucks, canoes in flooded areas, sailing boats to paradise, take a break sometimes. Makeshift canoes, this one almost sank actually with my motorbike on it. In this case, uh, I went through a marsh, and as I got deeper, I couldn't actually see my motorbike. I was pushing it underwater for like two hours. I even stopped in the middle of this marsh and started smoking a cigarette. <laughs> when I got to the other side, I found out there was a crocodile farm nearby and the water had made them escape from the farm. <laughs> I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> Moving forward, we dive-bombed Mount Everest, which is where they, you land on a, par on a landing strip pretty much at a 20-degree gradient. So it almost looks like you're going in for a suicide run. As I journeyed, I met nature's exquisite hidden treasures. I swam with the stars. Uh, being a Taurus, that's my horoscope, I chose to headbutt this jellyfish, teach him a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> this dolphin waved me goodbye. This rhino peed me a Rubicon 
translation, do not cross this line or I will charge. I bathe with the uh, elephants in the Mekong, in the swollen Mekong. There were moments where I wish I had wings, moments where I understood teamwork, monkeyed around every now and then. Watch kids make toys out of dragonflies. They literally tie the tail with a string and let it buzz off, and they hold the string like a kite. That's what you do when you don't have kishish. <laughs> Watch the duck and a piglet have it out over a bowl of grub. And I won't lie to you, there were moments where I felt like a fish out of water. I tried unspeakable things. <laughs> um, interesting strawberries. Uh, dodged an assassination attempt at the Mayan sacrificial temple. Met Che Guevara. He's still around. Uh, explored cenotes, undercover, underground caverns. Dove in the blue hole and swam in hammerheads. And so 30 meter long stalactites. Hiked up the highest mountains, two of them. Met incredible cultures, people, Moments of stillness, this is in Kashmir. Understood how some people see the world. Die today, die tomorrow, what's the difference? Met entire generations that were born and raised in refugee camps. Watched nature in all her fury. So what chemical warfare could do, Agent Orange, Vietnam. Watch the resilience of the human race. People who have lost everything stand up and say, no, I will get back up. Moving forward, the 54 projects I'm about to present had a different set of challenges, and I do not have time to go through it. HIV homes, refugee camps, slums, suburban squatters, Railroad squatters, buying people out of slavery, bringing doctors to those in need, working with the lepers, hopefully the last of the world, many orphanages, and even one where 200 orphans had only one caretaker. There are many, there are many children out there, but very little childhood. Some projects cost me nothing but time, Others, I leveraged my education, my skill sets and ideas, tools that we take for granted, and you'll see how we use them later. Others cost money, naturally. No project being less or more important, I chose to shed some light on a few. The first one here is building water wells. Because I'm behind on my clock, I'm going to have to speed it up. But... In essence, when you build a water well for these people, you're in essence doubling the family income because what they're doing, they've deforested everything for miles. So they literally spend half their income on buying charcoal. That charcoal is then used to boil water, which is taken out of dugouts. So when you go and spend a measly $200, what you spend with your girlfriend on a night out, you give an entire community, a village, or maybe just five, six households, fresh water, with a water filter for 20 years. Here's what they can do with water too, take a shower. I kind of like this shot, I don't know what it looks like with the lighting. This is an HIV orphanage, you can see by the sores on their skin that uh, they are already infected, they are on the AIDS cocktail. This is a garbage dump. As far as I can see, people actually live on this garbage dump. They choose to live there and they choose to put their children with them because an extra pair of hands is actually more money, recyclables, a dollar a day. In my first day there, I had to spend a week in bed. I was tearing and I was coughing like never before because this place is consistently on fire, natural chemical combustions. In closing, the aim here was to take the kids off, so we actually have to bribe the parents, bribe the parents to take the kids off the dump, to put them in a housing, 
and to feed them and to educate them. They prefer them with them there. On the lighter side, uh, I mobilized some tourists. We did a massive cleanup on one of the reefs, and then we also planted mangroves, which are integral to the reef. But without it, the reef falls apart over time. This is one of my favorite projects. So I was in Belize, Belize it. And um, I get there, I'm actually there to take a break. And I meet the village chief on my last day, and he goes to me, we have a school, we have a $5,000 budget for the school, per year, salaries, maintenance, books, the works. How does this roll? So I told him, okay, now I've been traveling for a couple of years, I want to up my game, I want to start my own initiatives, I don't want to assist existing initiatives. So I came up with the idea, excuse me, let's do an add a dollar campaign. How many room nights do you have a year? About 200,000. Average room spend, 35 bucks, great. How about we add a dollar per person. I'm a tourist. Would it bother me to pay $36 for my night? And you give me a coupon with a picture of a child and let me know that now I'm also contributing to your island? Think about it this way. Just 10% of people complying, and there's more, you more than quadruple the annual budget of the school. Thinking outside the box, as much as I hate that word. Here I saved a owl from becoming a chicken McNugget. It's actually an endangered species, and I bought it for $6. And I set it free, obviously. I wasn't too hungry. Over here, I got smuggled into the Karen rebel camps in Burma uh, using SAS tactics. They took me in overnight cover. I was taken in to build a school. I'm just posing with a, whatever it is, grenade launcher. I didn't really use it. I wanted to. Point, got in there, financed the school, met the first general who picked up arms when General Aung San Suu Kyi was assassinated back in the 50s, or was it late 40s? Along my journey, I met the real heroes. People like me, we come and go. This lady is dying of leukemia, and she decided to make sure that this orphanage and the 30 kids will have food, education, and a life as long as she's living. So she uses her pension and her network to finance this orphanage. These are heroes. Other heroes came from Dubai, Gulf for Good. I was just in the hood, and I, jumped, and I joined in with them, with Sir Brian. They raised a, they raised a total of a quarter of a million uh, for an orphanage in Nepal, and their challenge was to hike Mount Annapurna. So I joined them, and um, this is another innovative way of getting people in, involved. So this is baby Oli. He survived three days under the rubble in Haiti. We pulled him out with third-degree burns. He was literally cooking. I will change the picture because I know it's disturbing. Um, well, so is that one. Um, he survived three full days. He came out, and the guy was dancing like Michael Jackson once he recovered from the pain, and the guy just stole my heart. I said, I want to help this kid. So I put on my Facebook group, had about 3,000 followers. I said, guys, we need doctors. I'll fly them in. They work pro bono. So I found a local hospital. We had offers from Dubai, Manila, uh, Germany, Miami. And this goes to prove a point. If you provide the opportunity, people will step up. People do not. Thank you. People will not take the initiative nine times out of ten, just like in the real world. you got the leaders, you have the followers, but they want to do good. Just make it palatable for them. Time, time, time. Uh, my last project was in Cyprus, very random. With the help of World Vision, who are one of the biggest charities supporting the Syrian refugees in Lebanon, we just had an idea. Let's make some calls. Let's fill up a container worth of goods. So what do we do? Pick up the phone, we call schools. In a couple of weeks, we had a container full of clothes, toys, blankets, sleeping bags, tents, the works, opportunity. We got 40 volunteers who came down, and I'd love you to give them a round of applause if you can in absentia. <laughs> 5,000 children, 5,000 children will be clothed in the cold winters of Lebanon from a couple of phone calls. Think about what you can do. 
<clears throat> Finally, I believe that every human being has a profound yearning to change the world. I believe in the human fraternity. It firmly binds us in this life and the next. I believe in our collective responsibility towards the unpeople, those three billion who live on two and a half dollars a day or less. I believe that many of us simply do not realize how easy it is to change or save a life. I believe that most of us do not realize how much we can do with so little. Ask yourself, what do you stand for? And more importantly, what you won't stand for. In closing, I hope in my next TED Talk, if I get one, to talk about some of the solutions I've, I think I've come up with that could possibly save a lot of lives. Um, but for now, I'd like to leave you with a thought from another son of Lebanon, Khalil Gibran. And he puts it like this, and it's very humble and it's very true when you think about it. For in truth, it is life that gives on to life whilst you, who deem yourself a giver, are nothing more than its witness. Amen.